Our brand new cycle of basic Spacelands is now available for purchase at www.itresolvesmtg.com. What's going on, guys? Welcome to part two with this Jund control list brought to us by Turn One Soul Ring. Absolutely loving this list so far. Uh, already got three wins under the belt in video one. Uh, if you did not check that out, please go do so. Uh, it definitely is worth watching. Uh, this deck is sweet. Uh, I'm I'm hoping for another perfect record. We got one yesterday with the Sultai control deck that Turn One Soul Ring submitted. So I'm really really hoping we can do that again. Uh, obviously. If we don't, it's fine, but be really, really cool if we could. So let's try. Uh, I'm I'm really liking this list, though. I will say uh, in comparison to the the Sultai control list, uh, it feels like this one stalls out a little bit more. Um, that doesn't mean that it's bad. That just means literally I think uh, there are more instances where this has a little bit more like dead draw stuff uh solely because it's a little bit higher on the removal end uh in my i believe so at least uh and so it feels like it can kind of stall a little bit but i actually think that that works to its favor and that it pretty much always has the right answer so i'm very very happy with it uh looking forward to the next three games hopefully we can do some really awesome stuff uh the opponent not playing too much uh looks like a mardu list Let's go ahead and play Theater of Horrors. We'll see what they need to do. Uh, I'd like to get a second green source so we can play Casualties of War, but thankfully on the off chance we don't, uh, we do have Chandra available to us, which is very, very nice. So, uh, okay. Well, let's just activate this. Hit them. Might as well utilize the cards that we've got available to us, so we're going to hit this. Aw, oh, mean. That was so mean. Okay, that's fine. We still get one damage in at least. So, uh, we'll see what they can do. Um, next turn. So, we do have Chandra available to us. I think that's what we end up going with. Uh, and we're just going to go ahead and put a clock on the game. Uh, I think it's important to do that, especially in a removal-heavy deck like this one. Uh, I'm assuming they've got quite a bit. Yep, there we go. So, at least now we've got uh, a gauge on the game that they have to do something for. So, let's see what they can do. Uh, unfortunately, this does mean that... Uh, okay, well now at least we've got some something to hit uh with our casualties of war which is quite nice uh let's play this definitely gonna throw that on the bottom um unless casualties of war we're gonna hit a land and a creature and i think we're gonna hit castle ardenvale here just so they can't continuously spit out some creatures uh castle lockplane's also a bit of a problem but uh i'd rather go ahead and get the creature uh off the or the creature producing land off the field uh just so we don't have that issue. All right, Heartless Act. It's a card, um, unfortunately. And this is what I'm talking about when it stalls out a little bit where we just don't have a lot going on. We've got a lot of the answers that we need though, which is fantastic. We just, you know, nothing really all that exciting is happening quite yet. Uh, but hopefully uh, we could play out the Murderous Rider. Chances are though, We've got a clock on the game. We'd rather them just kind of sink themselves into the hole a little bit further because, you know, the reality is they probably just have removal for the Murderous Rider. This is very much a control deck. So your life total becomes four. Discard your hand. Each opponent creates five. Uh, well, that's fine. Um, We'll do this. Uh, we're doing this solely because we can get both things on the field. It's not that big of a deal, but that's okay. Um, this is an interesting card. Captive Audience. I don't believe... I mean, I've seen it before, but I don't believe I've ever seen it played before. That's fine. Kind of assume that they had something there. Um... We'll discard our hand. 
that just helps us kind of play this, so I'm super fine with it. And again, I'm assuming they've got removal for this, but this is going to force them to at least discard a card. It could very easily mean they take another three, which is important. So uh, we do kind of have to keep them at a man manageable life total. Uh, next turn, obviously, we're going to have to get down to four life, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. Uh, let's go ahead and play this out. Now that we do have only uh, two cards in the opponent's hand, let's go ahead and play everything out here. Sure. That's fine. Maybe that was a bit preemptive, but I think it's okay. Um, sure. We're kind of just giving them targets for their stuff, but the reality is it's filling up. Uh, well, not in that case, but the reality is we kind of want to fill up our graveyard as quickly as we can anyway. All right. Life total is at four, uh, which does kind of suck, but... So now this is just a dead card, though, right? It doesn't do anything. Yeah. Um, really glad we put the clock on with Chandra, though, because this is, you know... Ooh. Okay, well... Chandra versus Chandra. <laughs> um, that's a bit of a problem for us, because their Chandra is definitely going to happen first. This doesn't do anything. Um, it just fills our graveyard. Um... But we definitely lose, right? Unless there's, like, nothing we can do. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well-played opponent. This is a cool deck. I really like this. Um, Well done. That was a very hard-fought game, so I'm, I'm perfectly fine with that. Uh, unfortunately, that does ruin our perfect record, but that's fine. Uh, really, really enjoyed that match, actually. That was super, super sweet. Very cool deck on the opponent's side. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and jump into game two. Uh, that was really interesting, though. They have essentially just had more removal, I think, than we did. Uh, at maybe not even that. We just had tons of removal, but nothing to target with it. Um, yeah, that's all. It, it is what it is. I think we stalled a bit, but that's fine. Uh, do we keep? Do we keep? Yeah, we definitely keep. Uh, to double up on Croxa, which is quite nice, and then Murderous Rider to deal with some stuff to help us get to this Nessa. I think this is a definite, excuse me, keep. Um, hopefully these Croxas pull some good stuff from the hand. Ooh, they're mulliganing down as well. That's, I mean, that's good for us. Um, I'm going to play this out. Do kind of have to play that first, but that's fine. <sighs> Tasty. Um, let's do this. Uh, looks like Flash, <clears throat> potentially, uh, which is going to be annoying, uh, because they could pro they probably just have counters. Um, thankfully we have a way to deal with the board like late game, but they probably will have a lot of counters, so it's going to be a bit of a hard fought battle, I'm guessing. Uh, at the very least, this is good because it does get their their hand count down by one, um, which is obviously going to be pretty important against this hand or this deck. So, okay, they just discard an island. That's fine. Yep. I, again, thankfully, we've got the answer at instant speed in hand. So um, I'm actually not tremendously worried about that. Uh, let's go Croxa first. I'm going to make him discard again. Oh, good, a Slither Wisp. Uh, get that out of there. Uh, let's do this. Perfect. We're going to keep that. Um, based on the fact that they have Slither Wisp, this is the Demir version. Uh, and so they could very easily have quite a number of things that we do not want them to have. Uh, we're going to play that Taft and we're just going to pass. Um, we will murder a Strider this uh, if need be. Let's go ahead and force a counter. If they have a counter, that's fine, but um, I want them to I want them to play a counter. So good, that worked. Um I think we'll try for Nissa. Okay, that actually worked. That's a little surprising. Um we'll just untap this. I'm sure they've got ways to deal with these. Uh I'm 
kind of wanting to keep their creature count pretty low here, but uh, they may flash in and kill this. Okay. Maybe not. Maybe they don't have it. What I think is great about this deck, though, uh, is that they, you know, they deal with a creature that's fine because essentially it just is fuel for the fire later on, which is very, very cool. So lots of cool stuff with this deck. Let's play theater. See what they do. Um, they may counter this. I don't know. They did not, which is good. Um, let's just go ahead and play the murderous rider here. Uh, we'll untap the basic land. Not really looking to lose too many dual lands here because we obviously will need them. Um, but now we've got a pretty substantial board. Sure. Make an artless hack. That doesn't really matter. That was a weird time to do that, though, I will say. <clears throat> they could have removed three counters from either of these, then it just becomes a dead land, but whatever. I'm fine with it. I'd rather him kill the murderous rider. Oh, let's see. What do we hit? A land. Well, that's not super exciting, to be brutally honest. Uh, we'll play this. I mean, we'll ping for one. Um... We probably could have just played that land, to be honest. It didn't really matter, but that's fine. Uh, let's do this. Let's untap that. Um, yeah. Good game. We don't... Can we... Yeah, we can just ping him again. All right, cool. There we go. We got there. That was pretty sweet. Um, that was an interesting match, uh, or game, excuse me. Uh, Theater of Horrors really showing its colors there, which was really cool. I didn't... I think that was ill-played a little bit on the opponent's end. Um, and certainly my end could have probably been a little bit cleaner, but I think that, uh... Mm, I, I think they could have played a little bit better. Obviously, coming from me, that doesn't mean it's done, but, um... Anyway, last game, guys. Let's see what we can do. Loving this deck, man. Holy crap, I love this deck. Uh, I love Jund, just as a general rule of thumb. Um, so I'm very, very happy with this. And Casualties of War. Uh, do we keep this hand, though? Um, I kind of want to say no. Uh, I'm going to mulligan. I don't know if that's 100% correct, um, but I, I will. This hand's probably worse. Um, but it does have double Heartless Act, at least. And both, or excuse me, all three colors of mana. So I'm going to try it. Nissa is a good draw as well. Uh, we really just want land, so I'm I'm on the hunt. Thankfully, we've got a lot in our deck. But And there's another one. Uh, let's Temple. We'll keep that. Um, I don't know how viable these, like, removal spells are going to be against this deck. Uh, Storm's Wrath might be okay based on, like, Teferi's, um, but, you know, it is what it is. We'll see. Uh, Yorian is very, very good. We really don't see very many, um, at least as many companions now that they've been kind of nerfed, though. Uh, so it's interesting to see this. Bant Ramp Yorian. Is this a Garuda deck? It might be Garuda. In which case, Extinction Event is going to be sweet. <laughs> sure. Might just be Control, then. Um, so next turn, we get to play a Nissa. What do they have? Oh, it's just a Control deck. Okay. Uh, let's do this. Let's do this. While we have the opportunity, uh, we'll, I guess, untap this. That's fine. And we're going to go ahead and attack the Tamiyo here. Tamiyo is actually a bit of a problem, so let's go ahead and try and get rid of that. Ooh, that's unfortunate, but yeah, that makes sense. Um... Still digging for that Uro. Uh, casualties of War. If only we could actually play that. Um, so we can't really even Crocs of them. 
which is super unfortunate. Um, so we're just not going to do anything. Uh, we could have Storm's Wrath there, but I just don't really think it's worth it. Um, they're going to be able to get something pretty big with this Elspeth Conqueror's death. Thankfully, we've got Extinction Event, uh, which is really, really important. <laughs> Man, they are not hitting Uro. <laughs> I wonder if they even have Uro. No, I'm just kidding. Of course they have Uro. It's a ramp deck. Um, so they're probably just going to get Dream Trawler, if I had to guess. Oh, that's good. And very annoying. Um, I mean, technically we should tap it. It doesn't actually matter. Uh, man, that's annoying. Uh, let's think about this for a second. It's good. Destroy target planeswalker, which is definitely going to be convenient. Um, to do that, we're going to have to shock ourselves, but I do think it's worth it. Let's go ahead and get rid of Tamiya. They're going to be able to get something back here, uh, which is like fine. Oh, actually, that might have been a bit of a mistake. We could have just Storm's Wrath. Oh, okay. Well, that worked anyway. So, I'm assuming Dream Trawler. If I had to guess. There it is. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, let me guess Uro. Look at there. Who knew? All right, so do we deal with the Dream Trawler or do we deal with the two Planeswalkers first? I kind of think it's the two Planeswalkers. I definitely think it's the two Planeswalkers. If they have a counter here, that's going to really suck. They probably do. Uh, chances are they do, but yeah. Had to try, I think. Uh, either way, we would have, I mean, we couldn't have killed either one of these, so that works out. Um, okay. Got to be honest, we're slipping away in this game. Uh, they've just got so much stuff. Uh, to deal with anything that we do um, and all they've got to do is leave up mana given that they have so many counters we fared a lot better in video one um, but I think that's okay I don't I mean that's perfectly fine uh, okay they did not hit a Dovin's Veto which is pretty important they got their Uro look at them That's good. Um, sure. Yep. Hmm. Counter. Just a guess. Yep. Uh, I am going to cash one of these in. Just to... If they want to give it hexproof, they can. It doesn't really matter. Okay. Ugh, this feels terrible. Uh, it is what it is. Um... Now, though, the problem is that they can just, like, pull stuff back with Tamiyo. Uh, we can Casualties of War, but they're just going to be able to discard in response and protect the Dream Trawler. So, you know. Oh, and they have a Neutralize. Yeah, then. Good. This is going to go well. Yep. Yep, yep. Hmm. Like, we just lose, right? We don't have a way to actually deal with this. Yeah. I'm just going to go ahead and concede. Uh, let's go ahead and sum up our thoughts on this deck. So, first of all, I just want to say, again, a huge thank you to Turn 1 Soul Ring. Not, not only did he recommend this deck, he's recommended quite a number of decks in the past, uh, which is very much appreciated. So, thank you very much to you. Um, and, again, anybody that wants to, to recommend a deck, you're more than welcome to. Uh, Discord or just comment section is a great place to do it. But... Anyway, thoughts on the deck. Um, 
obviously didn't post as good of a showing as the Sultai control deck. However, uh, I don't necessarily think that this is, uh, I still think that this is a very solid deck is what I'm going to say. I think for a Jun list right now, this is about as good as it gets. Um, I think, uh, and this is just my assumption, um, you need the 27 lands because there is no actual ramp in this one, whereas in the Sultai control list that we played yesterday, there obviously is quite a bit of ramp. Um, and so this really, really needs to hit the lands. Therefore, the 27 lands does make sense. However, when such a large portion of your deck is dedicated to lands and then a very a, another very substantial portion of your deck is dedicated to removal, um, I think you get into a position, which we did see a couple of times, where you just stall a little bit. Uh, that's not to mean that. That's not to say the deck is bad. It's just not very tooled against uh, particular kinds of decks. I think in that case we could see control is always going to be a problem for this deck because um, while it's great that we've got things like Murderous Rider uh, and Storm's Wrath, you know Storm's Wrath is very conditional. It's going to work some of the time, uh, but not only of course does it hit, get it hit with counters, but uh, more importantly that four damage isn't always going to kill. Uh, a planeswalker, uh, which we saw in this case, there were a couple times where you know we could have played Storm's Wrath. It wouldn't have solved the problem. It would have uh, it would have deterred the problem a little bit, but not solved it. Um, Murder Strider, though, very very good. Uh, it's great to be able to just kind of point, shoot, and click. Uh, Eat to extinction, extinction, also very good. Though we didn't really get to see it played much this time, but uh, all things that can hit planeswalkers, which does help that matchup. Uh, but unfortunately, against a lot of counter-heavy magic, uh, the those the cost of removal that hits creatures and planeswalkers is that it generally has a higher mana cost, which means you can't necessarily double up on the same turn and get around counters. Uh, that's not to say you can't; it just means that it's a little bit more tricky. Uh, whereas sometimes, you know, if you've got cheaper removal, like just burn, for instance. Uh, you might be able to do it a little more efficiently. Uh, either way, I think that this deck was really, really fun to play, and it did exactly what I wanted it to do. Uh, I would play around with some different compositions with this one. Um, I think you could go like Agonizing Remorse route uh, and really go heavy on the discard on the hand, maybe just to see how that plays out. Uh, I really, really liked Theater of Horrors. I was pretty impressed by that card, uh, to be honest. I didn't expect to be as impressed as I was. Um, Planeswalker is, of course, fantastic. We really didn't get to see Liliana do her thing, but Chandra, perfect. Exactly what you want in this list. Absolutely perfect. Puts a clock on the game, which is exactly what you need. So I really do enjoy this list. Again, I just want to thank Turn 1 Soul Ring and everybody uh, who suggests decks for us to play. It's very, very fun to see what you guys come up with. So thank you. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, of course, please leave a uh, like or a comment down below. We'd certainly appreciate it. And um, make sure, of course, to enter our core 2021 bundle giveaway. Uh, we are going to be giving away a bundle on July 6th. Uh, so if you'd like to enter, just subscribe to the channel, comment on any video with hashtag core2021, and that's it. That's all you got to do. We'll uh, we'll comment back. I know we're a little behind. We haven't commented on anybody quite yet, uh, but I do plan on starting that list this week, so that way we can get that uh, all started. So uh, that's a process, let me tell you. But uh, anyway, I do appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you hopefully very, very soon in the next gameplay video. See you guys.